all my young friends from Tiny Dot Tales. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Angela. Happy birthday to you. I'm reading a story which you love and which you requested Angela. The Beauty and the Beast. It has your favorite Disney princess Belle. So, are you ready? Let's go. Once upon a time in a far away land lived a young prince in a beautiful castle. Although he had everything he could want, he was proud and greedy. On a cold winter night, an old beggar lady came and asked the prince for shelter for the night and offered him a rose in return. But the stone-hearted prince turned her away. To his astonishment, at that moment, the old beggar lady turned into a beautiful fairy before his very own eyes. The prince wanted to ask for forgiveness, but it was too late. The fairy had realized that there was no love in the prince's heart. As a punishment for his cruel heart, she turned him into a horrible beast. Then she cast a spell on everything in the castle, including the servants. The fairy gave the beast a magical rose and said, If you are successful in finding someone you love, and the person loves you back too, before the last petal withers and falls on your 21st birthday, then the magic spell will be broken. If not, you will remain a beast forever. The beast kept himself hidden in his castle because he was ashamed of his horrible face. With a magical mirror, he could see the outside world. The years passed. The beast had given up the hope that anyone would ever love him. And slowly, the rose began to wither too. In a village near the castle lived a beautiful girl named Belle, who lived with her father. Belle's father, Morris, was an inventor who invented very special machines and then took them to the annual fair to sell them there. The people of the village liked Belle. Belle had her nose buried into books the whole day long. The young hunter Gaston, an admirer, could not understand her. Why don't you look at me instead of those books, Belle? He said. I am more interesting. But Belle ignored him. One day Morris went off to sell one of his machines. But he lost his way and was attacked by a pack of wolves. His horse Philip dropped him down and galloped away in panic. But to Morris's luck, he was able to find refuge in a strange old castle deep in the forest. In the castle, Mrs. Potts the teapot, Mr. Cogsworth the clock and Mr. Lumiere the candle stand welcomed Belle's father. Our master will be angry if he sees you here, they said. At that moment, the beast appeared. He caught Morris and put him in the castle dungeon. Back at home, Belle was getting worried since the horse Philip had come back without her father. She swung onto Philip's back and said, Run, take me to my father. Philip galloped fast and brought Belle to the castle. But just as she found her father in the cell, the beast appeared. Belle recoiled in horror at the sight of his face. Then she gathered all her courage and pleaded with the beast to set her father free and to keep her imprisoned instead. The beast agreed to Belle's suggestion. He set Morris free and threw him out of the castle. Then he led Belle to her room and said, The castle is now your home. You can move freely all over, but do not enter the West Wing. This part of the castle is out of bounds for you. But in the night, Belle crept quietly into the west wing despite the ban. There she was attracted by the magic rose, which was on the window under a glass. 
The beast suddenly appeared in front of the window and roared in anger. Belle turned her back in horror and fled the room. In fear and panic, Belle rode out on Philip into the dark forest where she was attacked by wolves. Luckily, the beast came to her help and fought the wolves till they gave up and disappeared from there. When Belle saw that the beast was injured, she felt very sorry for him. She brought him back to the castle and bandaged his wounds. Thank you for saving my life, she said politely. But the beast only murmured an answer. But as Belle turned away, something like a slight smile passed over his face. In the following days, the beast showed Belle his library and behaved like a gentleman. Maybe she will succeed in breaking the spell, Mrs. Potts muttered to the others. One evening, as Belle showed the beast how to dance, he asked, Are you happy here with me, Belle? Yes, of course, Belle said hesitatingly. But I'm longing for my father. If only I could see him again, I'd know whether he is well or not. You can do that, the beast said and gave her the magical mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw her father searching for her when suddenly he sank to the floor. I must go to him, Belle cried, otherwise he'll die. The beast said sadly, You can go, but take the mirror with you and look into it sometimes so that you don't forget me. The magical mirror led Belle to her father. But hardly had she brought him home when some villagers appeared. We have come to take your father to the mental asylum, said Gaston. He's crazy. He insists that a wild beast has kept you imprisoned in his castle. Then Gaston whispered to Belle, If you marry me, I will see to it that nothing happens to your father. Never, Belle replied. This beast exists. I can prove it to you. She turned to the crowd and said, You can see it in the mirror, but it is not bad and will not harm anybody. When Gaston saw how lovingly Belle looked at the beast in the mirror, he was filled with jealousy. He said, Folks, look at this monster. It will come and rob your children. We must kill it. Belle tried in vain to stop them. When she finally reached the castle, Gaston and the beast were fighting each other. As the beast saw Belle, he stopped fighting and Gaston used that opportunity to jab a knife in the beast's back. The beast roared so loudly with pain that Gaston stepped back, lost his balance and fell into the valley. Belle knelt beside the injured beast. She kissed him on his cheek and cried, No! You must not die. Please don't. I, I love you. At that very moment, the magic spell was broken and the beast turned into a handsome young prince. The magic rose bloomed again under its glass and soon the wedding was celebrated. Of Belle and her prince, whom she loved even when he was a beast. Wow! Love is the most powerful emotion. It can move mountains and in Belle's and the Beast's case, break horrible curses. I sure enjoyed reading this story for you, Angela. I hope you enjoyed hearing it too. Have a splendid year ahead. I wish you all the best. From Tiny Tot Tales, till next time. Toodles everyone! If you enjoyed listening to this story, please like and subscribe to Tiny Dot Tales. If you have any story requests, please send an audio or a visual clip to our email given in the description below. Thank you!